So now we're going to move on and we're going to look at parametric equations. So this is something that will feel completely new to a lot of you, right? Because we're used to, well, what have we done so far, right? Most of single variable calculus, right? Most of what we've done, we typically start with y is a function of x, right? So really, what does that mean? We start, you know, what is f? So we think of f, so think of f sort of this way, right? So f goes from r or maybe some, maybe some interval, right? So it's going to take values in some interval as an input, and it gives us a real number as an output. This is one way to think about it, right? So in other words, right, there's, you start with an x over here. There's, you choose some x in the interval. You plug it into your function, and you end up with a number, f of x, over there. Right? And, and so then you can think about things like the graph, right? What, you know, what is a graph? If you think about carefully, what is the definition of a graph, right? So the graph would be the set of all points x comma y, where y is equal to f of x, right? And x is in the domain, which I've, I've chosen a closed interval. Of course, the domain is not necessarily a closed interval. That's just how I happen to write it. Um, or you might think of it this way. It's the set of all points of the form x, f of x, right, where x is an element of a, b, or whatever the domain has to be, happens to be. So graphs look like that. But we know there are a lot of limitations on what you can do with the graph, right? Um, graphs have to pass the vertical line test, right? So we know we can, we can do something like you know, y is equal to x squared. That's fine. That's a graph, right? This is a set of all points. Every point on the graph, right, is of the form x, x squared, right? It fits this definition. But we also know there are lots of curves that we can't express as graphs, right? Um, circles. We just finished conic sections, right? Ellipses, hyperbolas. These are not graphs of functions. Even a parabola if it opens horizontally is not the graph of a function, okay? So sticking only to graphs of functions is pretty limiting. And we've already seen a context in which we get much more interesting graphs by not insisting on always just graphing functions, right? When we looked at um, graphs of implicit, you know, curves that are defined implicitly, right? Implicit equations, uh, we got lots of interesting curves, right? Um, we see curves like, what are some of the ones that we've done? Like x squared plus y squared squared is equal to, let's say, 4, 4xy, something like that, right? Um, and you get, uh, you get one of these like figure eight curves. I think I could, I could be misremembering this one. I might have it wrong. I think I have it right. That this particular one looks something like this, right? You get a curve like that. Definitely not the graph of a function, okay? Um, the trouble with, you know, defining curves implicitly, I mean, you can get a lot of interesting curves that way, but these types of equations, they're difficult to analyze, right? It's hard to come, for example, one thing that's difficult here is how do you come up with points that satisfy the equation, right? We can find a couple if we work at it. I think this one is set up so that like 1, 1 works, minus 1, minus 1 works, um, but you know, if you're just looking like, how do you solve from figure out all the points, even on a circle, right? Even on a circle. Trig functions are complicated because it's difficult to sort of, you know, algebraically figure out what are all the points on it that satisfy the equation of a circle. So implicit equations are hard to work with. So we want to figure out, well, what are some better ways that we can do this? Turns out this one, um, this particular equation works really well if you write it in terms of polar coordinates. That's coming in a couple of sections from now, okay? Um, but the other thing that we do, the other strategy we can do is, is we, can, we can kind of extend a little bit and we can say, well, you know what, why don't, we, why don't we broaden kind of our understanding of function and instead what we'll do is we'll think about a function that goes from an interval and not to r, but to r2. And so now what's going to happen is the input for our function is going to be some real number t, okay? And so let me 
try to be consistent with what we had over here. So T, and T is going to go now not to just a single, you know, a Y coordinate like we do for, for graphs. It's going to go to an ordered pair, X of T, Y of T, right? So we actually assign each number to a pair of numbers, right? And so really, this is just a pair of functions, right? So we're writing X as a function of T, right? So in other words, you know, we could think of this as like X is some function of T, right? So X is some, let's say, F1 of T. Y is some other function, maybe F2 of T. But we'll often just write it as X of T and Y of T. Uh, you'll see this notation as well. Okay, um, so this is this is another way to describe curves. Uh, this is a very useful way to describe curves if you want, for example, if you want a computer to sketch your curve, right? Um, because a computer can take you know some set of values, some subset from your domain, right? Um, evenly spaced values, something like that, plug into the functions, right? So the computer takes a bunch of samples, evaluates on these two functions, gets the numbers out, shoves the numbers into an ordered pair, plots the point, right? So we do that for like 100 samples, we get a pretty good idea of what the curve looks like. So computers are really good at plotting parametric curves, right? So you'll see parametric curves quite a bit um, when you're working with software and you're trying to plot things, okay? Um, so just as a, as a quick example, before we end, coming back again to the circle, right? We could do this, we could say, well, let's take x to be cosine of t, y to be sine of t, and take t to be, let's say, between 0 and 2 pi, right? We know that's the circle, because we know that the way we defined sine and cosine, we said, well, sine and cosine are just the x and y coordinates uh, of points on the unit circle corresponding to a given angle t, okay? So if we were to plot all these points, we would get exactly the unit circle. Um, and of course, we can go from these parametric equations back to something like this because we know that cos squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. So, of course, x squared plus y squared equals 1. We get the usual equation for the unit circle. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at, you know, how do we actually plot curves that are defined this way? How do we, how do we if we're given parametric equations, can we essentially eliminate that parameter t and come back to something that looks like this? We'll look at that. Um, and of course, the other thing we'd like to figure out is if somebody hands us an equation like this, can we actually parameterize? Can we come up with functions um, of t for x of t and y of t that fit the equation and let us recreate the curve? Because um, that's often what we're going to need if we want to, say, plot things in the computer.